Well, good morning, uh, obviously. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that I would be filling in for uh, Pastor Nikki today. Uh, I was looking for a red wig that I could wear, because when she filled in for me, she uh, had that fake mustache. I don't know if you happen to see that, <laughs> that devotional, but uh, it was pretty, pretty hilarious. So, well, uh, today I just want to share a few scriptures with you, give you something to meditate on today as you're out and about and doing the things that you need to do. Just a reminder, today at 10 a.m., we will be at uh, Mid-Michigan Gratiot Hospital uh, out in the parking lot praying for uh, the, those employees that are there and for the patients that are there. And uh, we'll look at uh, later in the week, I'm leaning toward Wednesday, but I'll shoot something out before that where we could do the same in uh, Mount Pleasant at McLaren uh, as our uh, hospital employees are, are being strained uh, with a lot of hours uh, as they're caring for people. So encourage you to uh, consider today, if you're free at 10, to meet us in the parking lot at Gratiot, uh, Mid-Michigan Gratiot, and then uh, I'll get back with you. I'm thinking Wednesday we will circle and be in the parking lot at uh, McLaren here in Mount Pleasant praying for our uh, hospital employees that God's grace will continue to give them strength and wisdom and praying for the patients that are there. I wanted today, uh, Fred alluded to being on a prayer meeting the other day, and uh, Pastor Eric Moore mentioned that he really sensed the Lord was moving the church past from just using the sword, uh, learning, knowing how to use the sword, but also the scepter, the scepter. And something just jumped in my spirit. And I looked up uh, yesterday, afternoon what what scepter stands for in the bible the scepter is a rod or a maze used by a sovereign as a symbol of royal authority so a scepter speaks of royal authority kingly authority and god is moving is helping us as the church not only to use the sword which is the word of god but also to operate in the authority that god has given us as kings and priests in revelation it's also mentioned again uh, in Exodus, I think it's, uh, I won't try to guess what chapter, but it's in Exodus where Moses says, I would that you were all kings and priests, a kingly priesthood, that God is looking for a kingly priesthood. And so God has given us authority. I looked up some scriptures that dealt with this and in Psalms 45, verse six and seven, it says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. So the scepter, the authority that God uses is, uh, uh, is, is righteous. It's not an unrighteous authority. It's not a dominion. It's not an oppressive tyrant control. But it is a scepter, a, 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 an authority in righteousness, in what is right, what is right. And that portion of Scripture is quoted over in Psalms 1 verse 8 or excuse me, Hebrews 1 verse 8 as well. So a couple of scriptures for you to look at, Psalm 45, 6 and 7 to think about today, Hebrews 1, 8, which is quoting Psalms 45, 6 and 7. And then I'd like to have you, if you happen to have your Bibles with you, if not, that's fine, I'll read it, but maybe you could write down the verse. It's Psalms 110, 1 and 2. This is a powerful, powerful verse here. Again, yesterday during the worship, this verse just kept resonating with me. It says this, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. That's the scepter, the scepter of your strength, of your power, out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Where's the scepter going to come from? Out of Zion. Zion is a picture of the church. It's a picture of the people of God. So the scepter of God's authority is going to come out of the church, out of the people of God. That in the spirit, we move in the authority that Jesus has given us. Now in Luke chapter 9, this is another portion I'd love to have you write down. One, Jesus gave the disciples power and authority. He didn't just give them power, but he gave them the authority to use the power. And God is wanting to awaken us. He's trying to awaken me to the reality of the authority that we carry in the spirit realm. Uh, I think of the story of the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts. And uh, the sons of Sceva tried to drive out these demonic spirits. 
And the, 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 the Spirit says, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? The ones who didn't know Christ, there was no sense of authority. They didn't have any authority. They didn't have any faith. But those, Jesus and Paul, those we who know Christ in the Spirit have authority against principalities and powers. Now, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse number 19 states this so clearly, so clearly. Just want to encourage you today that you're not powerless and you're not without authority. Jesus has given you the power of the Spirit to enable you, to strengthen you, and He has given you authority. He's given you delegated authority, His authority to operate in this realm to bring heaven to the earth, to bring God's will into situations. Now, here in Luke 10, verse 19, it says, Behold, I give you, He's speaking to the disciples, He's speaking to us, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. What has he given us? He's given us authority over all, not some, but all the power of the enemy. We need to operate in that authority. We need to take the scepter out of Zion. That scepter will come and we need to declare your kingdom come, your will be done as in heaven on earth. We use our authority to release heaven upon the earth. He goes on in this, all power over the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Powerful, powerful. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Now, again, I'm going to give two more scriptures, and I'm giving these scriptures to you and just encourage you to think about this today and meditate on these verses. But in Matthew 16, 18 and 19, Jesus says this. He says, I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, the rock is the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against her, shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail. And we've talked about this enough, that the gates are not those things that are protecting us. They're gates that we are to storm, break open, and set at liberty those who are oppressed and held captive. We are to release people from captivity and bondage. The church is to be the one on the offensive, walking in authority, walking in power. And out of Zion, his scepter will come, his authority will come. And he says this in verse 19, I will give you the keys. Who's he speaking to? Us. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. What is This here is, again, connecting with Jesus, teaching us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So Jesus here is saying, you have the authority to bind, you have the authority to loose. Not just at your random will, but we are to release what is in heaven onto the earth. We have the authority to say, I bind the will of God into that situation. I bind that that situation to God's divine purpose. I loose the will of God into that situation. We have this authority to bind and to loose what is already in heaven. God's desire has always been that heaven would be on earth, that earth would be a replica of heaven. Now, how is that going to happen? It happens through the church. We are the ones who have the scepter, the scepter of his authority. His authority, his will comes forth out of the church out of the body of Christ, out of the church. Now the last scripture is Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Our just saying words have absolutely no power. If all they are is empty and hollow. But faith is a, is a substance in the spirit realm. It literally has an effect in the realm of the spirit. Remember when the woman touched Jesus' hem, he sensed something. He felt faith. He felt faith because it's a substance. It's a substance in the spirit that brings an effect. So as we speak, as we wield the scepter, it's not enough just to say hollow words. There has to be a faith, a substance in those words that we believe that what we say is going to have an impact that's going to bring the release of heaven into the earth, into that situation, that God's will is going to be released into that situation as we pray, 
as we pray. God is wanting the body of Christ. He's wanting us, again, just going back to this word that was shared Saturday that just resonated in me. And I'm going to study this more myself. I want to learn not only how to use the sword, but how to use the scepter, the authority that God has given me to walk in the spirit realm uh, with authority, with power, to release heaven into situations, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, those that are captive. So I encourage you, take these verses today, think about them, study uh, the idea of the scepter. There's several verses in scripture, sometimes the scepter is dealing with the scepter of an evil king. You know the story of Esther, how Esther approached the king and he held out her scepter. And favor was upon her. So you have been given authority. I have been given authority and power to see God's purpose, God's will be done in our own lives, in our families, and in our communities, our workplaces. Let's walk as kings and priests. Priest has intimacy with the Father, able to ascend to the Father, hear the voice of the Father. And that's it. We can't just shoot out any words. What's the will of the Father out of that relationship with the Father? Then his scepter comes forth uh, as we speak forth his word with authority. So, oh Lord, bless you today. I, I pray you would just have a rich day of communion with the Lord and that the Spirit of God direct your steps today. Have a good one.